What's up ladies and gentlemen YouTube everybody out there it's Phil 20 and I'm back Check it out. So I've got the uh, P81870 Titan digital manifold set. This is a full color display. This is the one that you can uh, Bluetooth, connect to your email. It's also got like 125 different refrigerant types. Uh, I've got it you know, hooked up to the system. We're checking the subcooling and superheat right now. Our subcooling is 12.5 degrees and our superheat is 23.2. And this unit has, is pretty young. Actually, it's about two years old. We've had the modulating fan motors quit twice. Here's these type of module fan motors. You'll see uh, these modules aren't, you know, that great. Things on the back quit, but there's permanent magnet motors in there, and they produce electricity. You can make a wind turbine out out of them. Link in the description below. Also, I was showing you guys this stuff. What's really cool about this device here uh, it connects to what they call man tooth so let's continue this is what it looks like on the uh, the way it looks and let's zoom in over here so this is the way it looks it shows you the the suction temperature the liquid line temperature the saturated temperature, the, sat, uh, the liquid line temp, uh, the liquid line temp, saturated temp, so saturated both, uh, it, and this one's uh, subcooled below its saturated temperature, that means there's liquid pumping through that, and then right here, since it's above the saturated temperature, that means the refrigerant is being heated up enough so the compressor isn't pumping liquid refrigerant, which is a good thing. Uh, the superheat here is uh, 21.5 degrees, which is really great. I'm really happy with that. The calculated subcooling, 15.6. It varies a lot with uh, these units, depending on the temperature inside. And app is kind of cool. It really doesn't matter. So, so I mean, it's convenient because I can go to the truck. I can walk around the, the building. I can use this as Bluetooth. And you know, it does the vacuum testing as well, but I don't have the vacuum gauge hooked in. It's in the bag, not that big a deal. But also, it's got evacuation in microns. It's not hooked up. The vacuum sensor is in the bag. Uh, also, it's got the pressure test and hold. So you're going to pressurize it and then, you know, allowable tolerance. So you can go like 5.9, 0.2. 10%, whatever you want, anywhere between 0.2 and 10%. And then uh, test duration, five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, six hours, 24 hours is the most. Uh, pressure decay. If you go ahead and start this, that's when the pressure is testing. So, click on setup. And it's on a five minute timer. The pressure goes below, you know, 128 PSI on the suction side apparently is the one that you're pressure testing. If it goes below that, I'd say that the alarm will go off. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the gauge. And I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect these uh, temperature sensors, move those out of the way, and close these valves. I'm gonna let the refrigerant flow into the, from this side into the suction side to get the liquid out of the manifold set. You can see it's nearly clear. Yeah, close it off. Pull it off. It didn't spray like crazy because there wasn't no liquid refrigerant in the hoses because the refrigerant does condense inside the hose because it's a lower temperature than what's in here. So we still got our pressure hold test going. I mean, it's, you can see the pressure went up and then it backed down to 131. And so what we'll, 
you know, it's three minutes and 38 seconds remaining on the pressure test. We're going to go ahead and disconnect this hose. And it failed. And you show you the, the failed test. So you can basically walk away from the unit you're working on and not have to worry about checking the test. So you put your nitrogen in the system, you check it, then you're good to go. If it leaks, you got to put a refrigerant, you got to fix it. So whatever it takes to fix it. And since you can test it up to 24 hours, it's pretty nice. But we definitely need to uh, bend all the gas out of the hoses. Once I do that, I close the hoses. You know, not super tight. But then I open the valves and sell. So the valves, the rubber seals inside, aren't pressing against stuff continuously. So it, you know, doesn't smash it inside. And I'm I'm pretty happy with the purchase. It's it's pretty cool. It's beeping. It's telling me it's failed. So I'm just going to go to pressure hold and go back there, and then we're done. If we're going to, you know, turn it off, press and uh, hold the power button, and the charge cycle isn't too bad with these things. You, you just got a good battery. Unit. I'm pretty impressed with the battery. I haven't even had to charge it once since I've had it. I've used it about five or ten times, so it would definitely get you through one day of service if you just use it for service by itself. This thing does have a vacuum gauge on it for microns. Um, I don't think it's as good as the Super Evac 0 to 760,000 micron gauge, but it is very good compared to not having a micron gauge. I'm pretty happy with it, and if you guys like it, go get it. If you don't like it, well, I don't blame you. But it is the same price or cheaper than a four valve manifold set and a vacuum gauge. So, in my opinion, there's no reason not to get this. This is Phil Tony with Solar Power, Electricity, and Electronics. Peace out. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. There's lots more content coming. Click the subscribe button below. Make sure you come back for more because there's great content always coming up every day in this channel. See you next time. Peace.